Vim is a very powerful editor, but you may find that you've got a bit of a learning curve ahead of you before you become proficient with it. Now, to make matters worse, the default settings for Vim on Gaul pretty well make it useless. For example, if I go into Vim and I go into Insert Mode and try to use my arrow keys, you can see that it just prints out a bunch of these strange characters. Uh, similarly, if I go into Insert Mode and I press the backspace key, it functions as the delete key. If I had page up or page down keys on my keyboard, those would not be working. And I also have nothing that tells me whether or not I'm in insert mode or normal mode at any given time. So right now I'm in insert mode, but nothing on the screen tells me that that's the case. I have to remember that. Finally, I have no syntax highlighting, no line numbers, you know, all things that you would expect from even the simplest of text editors. So in this hack, we're going to solve all of these problems. I've written a script called Fix Vim that we're going to download and run, which will fix all of our Vim woes and even give us a few additional benefits at the command line. So for example, if I'm at the command line and I type a command here, and let's say that I want to change hello to goodbye. So I go to the beginning of hello and I press the delete key. Well, you can see that every time I do, it just prints out these tilde characters. Now additionally, if I log out of Obelix and I log back in, all of you Mac users out there are probably quite familiar with this annoying error message we receive every time we SSH into Obelix. Now when I get this prompt, I can simply type xterm, but it's rather annoying to have to do this every time I log in. Fortunately, our FixVim script will also take care of this problem for us. So to download FixVim, we'll use the wget command. I'll type wget dash dash no dash check dash certificate, and then I'll just paste in this URL. Now I have to use this no check certificate option because we're downloading from a link that uses HTTPS and unfortunately our systems group doesn't keep the root certificates up to date on Obelix. All right, so I've got that downloaded and you can see that it's in my directory now. I'm going to make it executable by typing chmod plus x fix vim .sh. And if I type ls again, I can see that it's executable because of those nice ls colors that we set up in hack two. Now all I have to do is run the script, dot slash fix vim dot sh. All right, now that I've run the script, you can see that it's applied the fixes. It asks me to log out and log back in. So I'll type exit and I'll simply reconnect. And for all you Mac users out there, you'll notice immediately that I didn't get an error message this time when I logged in. You can also see that if I try to use my delete key. Hey, look at that. It's working now. Perfect. All right, let's go into Vim here and see how things look. Look at that. We've got syntax highlighting. We've got line numbers. We've got a nice status bar full of useful information. It tells us the file that we're currently editing, what syntax highlighting is being, is being applied. In this case, syntax highlighting for the C language. It's telling us the ASCII code of the character that's currently under the cursor, the hexadecimal representation of that ASCII code, what column we're in on the current line, the current line number, and the total number of lines. You'll also notice that if I go into insert mode, it tells me down at the bottom that I'm in insert mode. If I go out of insert mode, that disappears. So that's kind of handy as well. And if I test out my arrow keys here, in insert mode, you can see that they're working just fine. Similarly, if I use my backspace key, that's also working. Looks great. So what did this script do? Well, first of all, we'll take a look at the hacksrc file that we've been using in our previous hacks. So you can see here that it added hack3 for us along with some commands to properly set up the terminal. Now I'm not going to go into what these commands do, but you can take a look at them if you're interested. FixVim also added a file hacks.login, dot hacks.login, which also contains a few more commands that we need to get our terminal working properly. Now additionally, FixVim added a local, dot local directory and if we take a look in here, you can see that it's got a few files, xterm and xterm256 color. And these are basically terminal definitions which set up our colors and our keys properly. So you don't want to delete this .local directory because if you do, then the fixes that we've applied will be broken. But if you ever did happen to delete it, you could always run the fixvim script again. Now finally, the script created a .vimrc file for us in our root directory. And this is a file that contains settings for Vim. So you can see that it's got a bunch of settings in here. It sets up our status bar at the bottom. It sets up syntax highlighting with syntax on and does a bunch of other useful things. Now, one thing I should just quickly mention is that it enables search highlighting with this set HL search option here. So if I were to type slash set to search for all instances of the word set in the file, 
and then I press enter, you can see that it highlights all of the matches of the word set. Now this is helpful to see where our keyword was found, but after we're done searching, the highlighting stays around. So to clear it, you can simply type colon no HL search, and that gets rid of it. All right, that's it for this episode. I'm Jeff Schantz. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy using Vim. As I said, it's got a bit of a learning curve, but if you take a little time and force yourself to use it, I'm confident you'll agree that it is truly the best programmer's editor.